too. All right. Anyways, I think it's about time that we start reading our poems. I have not given any thought to who might go first or anybody in particular that feels that they want to. I would like to not. You don't want to go <laughs> first. That's fine. I'll go first, goddammit. All right. I will read a poem that I am working on. And if this one is good, by the way, Russell, I'm going to want to add it to my book. <laughs> oh, again, okay. Okay. We'll it's print, your book. We'll, we'll print it out and we'll just slip it into the existing copies. You, you understand this is at your own expense. Uh, doesn't sound like it costs any money. Just print it, it costs out. costs a great... You're talking about an entire reprint no, of no, an no, existing no, no. book. No, 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 no. I am not. Russell. You're talking about taking the existing copies and then sticking in extra pages? Yes, along with the pages about how to make a bolo tie out of anything. Just sl- right. slip them in there into every existing copy. What about the, that is hard to understand? The only impediment to that is that it's impossible, but other than that, we'll try to work around it. Very good. All right. This poem is called, I One Time Killed a Frankenstein. I one time killed a Frankenstein whilst shopping in a store. He lurched toward me, arms outstretched as I ambled toward the door. In my hands, a new bandana, a hat ten gallons deep. In my body was a soul which my body aimed to keep. His voice was ghastly as he spoke in halting monster speech. And I tried with all my might to stay out of his reach. He said, you gotta pay for that. And filled my heart with dread. And then I drew my six gun and shot the monster dead. The news reports describe the monster simply as a man to keep from terrifying folks as only a Frankenstein can. So that's a poem there. Are we, uh, are we workshopping these poems? That's right. We're workshopping them. Because I yep. would have liked to know what store you were in. <laughs> Specifics. That's, it. That's, what, that's, that's the main thing that you I feel needs addressing? I don't care to shop there. Oh, oh well, yeah. Well, look, you can shop there now. Frankenstein's gone, but that was uh, yeah, he's been murdered. Laramie Feed and Western Supply. You know Laramie. Oh, sure. I love that place. Yeah, that's I was... where I lost my virginity. God damn it! Is that true? Oh, yes, you lost your virginity at mm-hmm. Laramie Feed mm-hmm. and Western Supply. I did. Who to whom? May I ask? Well, at the time, it was the it was that that cashier. Oh, okay. Uh, his name was his name was Hank. Hank. His name was Hank. And he just wooed me. Is that right? Yeah, he just wooed me. Sweetheart, there's a good chance he's been shot dead. Oh. Uh, Just to let you know. But I don't know. Maybe not. But he wooed you there and uh, and you took your virginity. Took my virginity right away. from, Ripped it out of me. Right there in the store? Mm Mm-hmm. What section of the store? Uh... Right in the back where all that, like, bird feed is. Oh, mm-hmm. that's the most romantic part of the store. Every time I see a bird feeder, yeah. I think about Hank oh. just ripping that virginity away from me. He ripped it away. He ripped it away. You got to write a poem about that, darling. I do. I do. I'm a, I'm write that down in my head. Write it down. Yeah. I, I lost my virginity amongst the bird feed. I that's very beautiful. much enjoyed that you used. Yes. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is a metaphor for all the qualities that make up a human being in that poem. Bartleby, I'm so confused by your words there. What are you talking about? What's a goddamn metaphor? Bartleby, what well, the hell are you talking about? It means you use the Frankenstein to represent how someone's kind of slapped together from this and that. Oh, I don't know. No, no, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I killed a Frankenstein. There he, was a Frankenstein he came at me. He saw oh, a monster. I, mis- I misunderstood. Me. No, no, no. What do you mean he thinks he saw a monster? There was a... Oh, I should have said right up front, this is a true story. This this happened exactly the way the poem describes it. Oh, I thought it was a story of you looking in the mirror and deciding to be a better person. Bartleby, Whoa. what are you talking about? No, no. sir. This is a this is a true actual story of a thing which happened to me, and the, and this is the how it went down. Now, I, Frankenstein. Can I, can I? Can I? But that's an interesting point. Can I throw out something here? Yes. It's, all right. It's I hate to be so obvious, but it's Frankenstein's monster. It's not uh, the monster's name was Frankenstein. You don't refer to a mo- the monster as Frankenstein. <laughs> This is a perspective you could literally only have if you read a goddamn old book by somebody from Europe. So now you're familiar. You know that there's a book called Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That I'm a, I, well, I'm barely aware of it. I have the baseline it was written awareness by a woman. that a cowboy written by might have. A woman. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's right. What? I know. Yeah, that's right. A woman writer. What? She wrote a book about an actual Frankenstein that happened that occurred in Europe. There was a Frankenstein out there. No, no. They had a Frankenstein there. 
And there's a number of Frankensteins all over. How many Frankensteins would you say there are well, loose in the world right now? I would have to uh, consult the census data from the most recent census. But uh, well, where they ask people, are you a Frankenstein? They be- yeah, sure. Are you a vampire? Are you a mummy? Are you a Frankenstein? Are Let you homeless? How, how many are people? Are you Mexican? How, how many people say yes to those questions? That's what I don't know. I don't have those numbers in front of me, Russell. I don't know the numbers. But I there's got to be. But I feel like you would think everyone's lying. They would say no. Anyone who says no is lying, right? Well, I think the census takers can tell if somebody's think, lying about being I a vampire. Think if it was really Frankenstein. a Frankenstein, yeah. he wouldn't say yes or no. He would just make some sort of grunting noise. Well, that's when they know they're dealing with the Frankenstein, yeah, probably, and they say, mark that they check the box yes to Frankenstein. Yes. But the yeah. Frankenstein in your poem, he says very clearly you have to pay for that. He doesn't that's correct. make guttural monster noises. Well, no, I said he, What? how did I put it now? I'll, I'll refer right back to my poem. Please do. His voice was ghastly, and he spoke in halting monster speech. Right. That is just how it sounded. But then what was the direct quote that you attributed to this quote-unquote Frankenstein? You gotta pay for that. You got, now, okay, you, you're putting on a voice, but he's saying you gotta pay for that like a person would. Uh-huh. Well. <laughs> he's not saying, uh, pay for. A Frankenstein is made up of the parts of people. He's got a tongue and a voice box. We all uh, have to look ourselves in the mirror and... Decide to pay for the sins we've committed over the years. Oh, poor Bartleby. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing you're saying makes any sense. But I do appreciate your feedback there that I should mention the name of the store. (laughs) Uh, Even though it might screw up my rhyming scheme, but I feel we're finding a way to work it in there. Sally, don't you find this poem a little scary that he, he murdered someone? Well, I mean, was it Frank? I mean, Hank? The Frank... Hankenstein? No, it was... Well, it was a Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say on the matter. 